Welcome, welcome one and all on this Sunday evening to our celebration of CBE's extraordinary cantor, Josh Breitzer. We have a sweet, funny, beautiful, heartfelt tribute in store for you tonight with soaring and tender vocals, trips down memory lane, the promised memes, and even a knock-knock joke or two. In short, we're gonna give the Oscars a run for its money. Tonight, we'll hear from Cantor Breitzer's students, his colleagues, his congregants, his family, and his friends, all of whom have given of their time and their talent to show their deep love and affection for our Cantor on this, his 10th anniversary of serving our community. So let us begin with greetings from CBE's president, John Horowitz, and from David Kasakove, who served as CBE's president 10 years ago when Josh first started as our cantor. Thank you, Rabbi Timoner, and welcome everybody. I'm John Horowitz, a president of CBE. It's a pleasure to welcome you all here tonight uh, for this really special evening. Uh, I first wanna thank a number of people who have really been responsible for putting this evening together. I first want to thank the chairs, Esther Bigler and Molly Silver. Thank you so much for organizing this and to the entire host committee uh, for all the work that you've done to make uh, what we know is going to be a really special evening. I want to thank uh, everyone who gave um, and uh, in honor of Josh and everything that he's done for the last 10 years. I want to thank you. Um, thank you to the clergy and the staff. Um, a tremendous amount of work went into this evening and I wanted to thank you. And then finally, to all the performers who've given their time and their talent uh, to tonight, um, thank you. And uh, I think it's an appreciation that we all have for everything that Josh uh, has given to CBE over the last 10 years and to the entire Jewish community. Um, and now to Josh. Um, you know, I wanna, you may wonder why I'm sitting here in the balcony uh, in the main sanctuary. And it's because Josh, you know, there's one moment every year uh, that I look forward to and it's, uh, Al Nora Alila, uh, and every year on Yom Kippur, um, I know it's coming, and I sit there and I wait and I try to watch you sneak up to the balcony. And every year I miss you, and then it comes and your voice comes booming from the balcony. And two things happen: one, I get chills because of the power and the beauty of your voice, and the second thing is it gives me that energy to get you know even though I'm hungry and tired, I'm able to get through the rest of the day. And that's really what you do for us in our community, Josh. You inspire us, um, you give us the energy, um, and your voice is such a beautiful, beautiful um, tool and instrument that you use. And um, we are so lucky as a community to have you. And it's not just you, it's also the family, and Donna, and Gideon, and Jonah. Uh, you all give so much to CBE, and it has been such 
a wonderful and great 10 years to have you as our canner, Josh. And I, uh, I can't wait for another 10 and 20 and 30, year more, 30 years more. So uh, I look forward to tonight. It's going to be a great evening. But on behalf of all of us here at CBE, Josh, thank you. Uh, and with that, I want to hand it over to David Kasikoff, uh, former board president. David. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm so sorry that we can't all be in the sanctuary here together to celebrate. But you know, as the great Rabbi uh, Yogi Berra once said, it's deja vu all over again. Indeed, when Cantor Breitzer first joined us uh, in the summer of 2011, the sanctuary was also empty. The ceiling above the balcony had collapsed uh, before Yom Kippur in 2008, and as Cantor Breitzer joined us, we were still in the process of restoring it. So, you know, I'm sure that as he was looking for his first cantorial position upon his ordination from HUC, there were many congregations with working sanctuaries and healthy endowments interested in hiring him. But thanks to the dedication of the cantorial search committee led by its chair, Ron Lieber, we were fortunate indeed that Josh was, was interested in our congregation, but it wasn't easy. When we first entered into placement, the American Conference of Cantors at first would not allow us to even interview Josh because in their view, our congregation was too large to hire a newly ordained cantor. We, but we were desperate for an opportunity to meet with him. As Ron said, he had a pure love of Judaism, of music, of teaching and learning, and we thought he'd be a great fit for our congregation. Finally, after a fair bit of nudging from Ron, and I'm being polite here, we were permitted to interview Josh. And so here we are today, 10 years later. Much has changed in Josh's life and in the life of our synagogue and in our world during this time. But what has remained constant has been Cantor Breitzer's golden voice, holding us together through changes in our clergy and leadership team, through financial troubles, through political upheavals, and now through a global pandemic. But through it all, there's Cantor Breitzer with his indestructible voice on the bima, or at the Grand Army Plaza with a flashlight taped to his forehead on Simchat Torah, or at a house of mourning singing El Malay Rachamim as his voice rises to elevate our broken hearts. But more than his voice, it is his spirit, his sweet and kind soul that has kept us together and nourished us during these 10 years. Josh, we are deeply grateful to you and your family for all you have given to our congregation. Mazel tov on the 10 years. May you and we together go from strength to strength in the years ahead. Thank you so much, David, and thank you so much, John. We're gonna begin our musical program of offerings by hearing from CBE congregants and participants. We're gonna start with Debbie Bruckman with help from ECC and Yachad Kids. Then we're gonna hear from Herschel and Lev Garfine. Then we're gonna hear from Jules and Julianne Hirsch, then Rose Moskowitz, then Rose Snitz, then Marcus Holly, and then Rachel Ulanet. is the spark of God's creation. In this house there is joy and celebration. By song or by word, 
your prayers will be heard in this house, in this house, in this house. shelter we can clothe and feed in this house there is always help for those in need the stranger makes a friend becomes inspired again in this house in this house in this house They hit the high seas. On the brighter side, always on the brighter side. Stay on the brighter side of life. With a song and a prayer and a pun might be there if you stay on the brighter side of life. What kind of music are balloons afraid of? Pop music. <laughs> Why do cats like to sing? What rock group has four men that don't sing? I don't know. Mount Rushmore. What is the vampire's favorite part of the guitar? What? The neck. Stay on the brighter side, always on the brighter side. Stay on the brighter side of life. There, stay on the bright side of life. How do you get a koala to go to sleep? Mm -hmm. You sing it a koala by. <laughs> what music do planets listen to? Neptune's. 
Why did Canner Josh play piano by banging his head against the keys? He was playing it by ear. What's the difference between a piano and a fish? <laughs> you can't tune a fish. Sing along, here we go. Stay on the bright side. Josh. And thank you for teaching us that song. So one afternoon, about 10 years ago, a past president who was also a bar and bar mitzvah tutor walked into the rabbi's study. And what happened? Rabbi Bachman introduced me to Josh Breitzer, who he was interviewing. And Josh Breitzer asked me if I was related to Jonathan Hirsch. And I said to him, yes, Jonathan Hirsch is my son. And Josh was a member of the Michigan Men's Chorus. And the Michigan Men's Chorus combined with the Smith College Women's Chorus to perform the Brahms Requiem, both at Smith and at Michigan. And I was the double bass player in, 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 for, for that concert. So we knew Josh. Or he knew Jonathan. Jonathan. <laughs> he knew Jonathan before we actually became uh, acquainted as the cantor of the, the uh, congregation Beth Elohim. I was also on the search committee. And uh, the, the, the search committee unanimously chose Josh over all the other candidates. So Josh was hired. We had this enthusiastic cantor, singer with his lovely voice, but we also got Donna Breitzer with her lovely voice. And then ultimately the boys and their enthusiasm on all our Zoom Friday night services now. So we have enjoyed seeing Josh develop both his voice and his spirituality. And we look forward on Friday nights now on Zoom to hear him and to experience some of his new songs that he introduces. So we thank you, Josh, for being here.
And we say, Hineni. This is an excerpt from Debussy's first arabesque, which I learned as a young student right here in Brooklyn. Memories of my lifetime in music have sustained me this year and always. Mazel tov to you, Josh, on this momentous occasion, wishing you a long and healthy lifetime of music making. Of a lark. 
Thank you so much to Mickey Navazio for accompanying Rachel in that beautiful piece. And thank you so much to almost Cantor, very, very almost Cantor, Shani Cohen for the opening piece in this house. Music in Judaism is itself a prayer. The Hasidim knew this and their polar opposite in most things, the Rambam also knew that words cannot capture the divine essence or serve as adequate vessels for our humble, humble creaturely reaching toward the numinous. Words can even be an impediment to genuine prayer when there are too many words or when they do not feel like our own or when they raise conflict within us, likely as words are to engage our critical minds. Music often expresses the heart more readily than words. And music has the potential to enliven our words, to fill words with ruach or spirit and meaning. Trope, the melody of Torah chanting, is used as punctuation, parsing one phrase from another, emphasizing, and so providing interpretation and meaning. Nusach, the musical motif of Jewish prayer is specific to each day. Shabbat Nusach is different from the weekday, which is different from each holiday, which is different from high holy days, which have their own sound. Shabbat morning is different from Shabbat evening. Each place in time has its own sound. And in this way, music helps us to feel time and its passage, to assign meaning to the rhythm of the seasons of our lives. 
This is the true gift of Cantor Josh Breitzer. You, his congregants, know him as possessing an extraordinary talent, a voice and expression and musicality. What I think many of you might not fully know is the meaning-making brilliance of your cantor. You hear it most, I think, in the blessing of the new month on Shabbat mornings when Josh will interpolate secular and American melodies related to the coming month, such as Auld Lang Syne or Yankee Doodle Dandy. But every day that he leads you in song or prayer, he is making meaning in time and teaching Torah. His nom de guerre, oral Torah, could not be more perfect. Let me give you some examples from just the last few weeks. Chanting Vea Hafta yesterday, Cantor Breitzer slowed and elongated the words Vihitem Kiroshim, be holy. Why did he do that? Well, the Parsha yesterday was Kiroshim, which means holiness. And it opens with the words Kiroshim Tihiyu. He and I hadn't planned it. He just found an opportunity, a moment to teach something. The night before, he chose to sing Kamocha, which means love your neighbor as yourself, which is a verse in the portion. Usually on Shabbat mornings during Ahava Rabbah, the prayer, which is before the Shema in the morning, Josh will repeat the word Ba'avor Imotenu for the sake of our mothers, just as a little feminist gesture, because usually it's Ba'avor Avotenu for the sake of our fathers. And this is a little moment he does without talking about it, without telling anybody, just this moment to lift up the women that are there in the prayer. But in the weeks after my father died, he changed it to Ba'avor Avotenu for the sake of our fathers. Again, not planned, not communicated. And when I asked him afterwards whether that was for me, he just said, of course. There are two points illustrated by these examples. First, Josh Breitzer is exceptionally aware in the moment. He is thinking about what he's singing, what it means, what month we're in, what Torah portion we're on, what's relevant to our time and place. He is never on autopilot. Think about how many times he has prayed those prayers, how many times he has rendered them in song for us, how easy it would be to go onto autopilot. But he is paying attention. He is live in the moment. He is making associations. He is thinking and teaching all the time. And the second point is the aspect of Josh that could be missed behind the booming voice and the impeccable presentation and the mastery. And that is that his thoughtfulness is not just brilliant, it is also loving. He cares deeply about the rest of the clergy team, about the whole staff, about his colleagues and the musicians that he works with, and about you, his congregation, and his community. This I have come to see and to know about your cantor. So all of this is to say CBE, you are one lucky congregation, and I am one lucky rabbi. Now we get to hear from a set of superstar musicians who have been guests at CBE over the last decade with Josh, and who wanted to share their talent and their love with our cantor. Hi friends, we're Nefesh Mountain, and we are so honored to be here to celebrate our dear friend, Cantor Josh Breitzer, on his 10 year anniversary at Beth Elohim. Ditto what she said, we love you Josh. Mazel Tov, um, to be at Beth Elohim for 10 years. Um, what a lucky community, you're an amazing talent, an amazing Cantor and friend, and um, we love you, they love you, and I love Beth Elohim, my childhood synagogue where I became a bar mitzvah. So we're gonna share with you a song about being together, even when we can't physically be together, we can always still be together and show up for each other. Our mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Blessings to you, Josh. Mazalto from your dear friend, Naomi. You helped me in so many ways, so many times we've worked and sung and been together to tap into more presence, reminding ourselves to breathe, to tap back into that neshama that Elohai placed in me and that it's pure and free. Elohai neshama Shina ta ta be, shina ta ta be, Elohai Nishama Tehorahi, Tehorahi, let it in, let it out. You can keep the breath inside you or go without, you can fade. You see, cause you know it isn't different. What's inside of me? I can breathe, breathe. Elohai Nishama Shina ta ta me, Shina ta ta me, Elohai. My God, the soul, the breath that you placed in me is pure and free. Blessings to you. When there is light in the soul, there is beauty in the person. When there is beauty in the person, there is harmony in the whole. When there is harmony in the home, there is honor in the nation. When there is honor in the nation, there is peace in the world. When there is light in the soul, there is beauty in 
the person when there is beauty in the person there is harmony in the home when there is harmony in the home there is honor in the nation when There is peace in the world. Hi, I am Neshama Karlibach, and what a blessing it is to be a part of this incredible 10-year celebration for Cantor Josh Breitzer. I feel so blessed to have been your congregant, still a congregant from afar, and to be your friend. Thank you for the light you bring. Thank you for showing me what it means to be a human being who shows up. You have shown up for me, but you've shown up for everyone. All of you at CBE, you all have. And we are so profoundly grateful for you. This is one of my most favorite Psalms. Tov lehodot ladunai. It is good to give thanks, good to praise God, to sing about God's chesed, God's kindness in the day, and your belief at night. And we learn, we do not sing that we believe in God at night when it's cold, when it's dark, when we potentially are confused and sad. At that moment, we are singing that God believes in us, that God's holding us, that God is making sure that we are not alone. Thank you, Cantor Breitzer, for, no, for making sure that all of us who walk through your door know that we are not alone. Thank you for holding us up. Thank you for showing up. May we continue to celebrate you for 120 more years at least. May you be strong. May all the gifts that you bring out of all of us, that you give to the world, come back to you a thousandfold.
inspired to show up and say hineni uh, when I see other people using their voices for good and standing up for what's right and standing up for what's just and helping those who don't have a voice to be heard. And Cantor Breitzer, I am so inspired by you and grateful to you for the ways in which you've helped so many of us to find our voices and to feel the power that we have when we use them. What inspires me to show up? When do I feel most empowered to say Hineni? Well, this song is about seeing the potential within ourselves to always aspire to do better, to be better. That we all have Kanfei Ruach, Wings of Spirit. Ali le mal 
למעלה לי, כי כוח אז לך, יש לך כנפי רוח, יש לך כנפי רוח, כנפי נשרים אבירים, אל תכחשי בם, הם יכחשו לך. דרוש אותם, דרוש בן אדם, ימצאו לך מיד. בני ובנות אדם, עלו למעלה, עלו. עלו למעלה, בני ובנות אדם, עלו למעלה, עלו. החזן ג'וש ברייצר, מזל טוב לך, מזל סימן טוב, החזן ג'וש. ג'וש ברייצר. Many of us know, or many people in our community know, that you and I have known each other for a very long time. In fact, I think I'm pretty sure I've known you since the day I was born. And it's a strange thing as a rabbi to work with someone every single day, someone on the clergy team with you, who is essentially a family member. But the unique glimpse that that gives me is a view of how much you have grown. And it's not just how much you've grown, of course, it's also all the many things I've learned from you and continue to learn from you, things that I am surprised by all the time, of course. But... I have a perspective of you that is 30 years long. And so I wanted to offer you some opportunity to reflect not just on your time at CBE, but also how much you have grown throughout your life. And it struck me that even though I've known you forever, as far as I can tell, uh, I don't know that I was actually at your bar mitzvah. And so we put together a little something for you, no big deal, something along the lines of a bar mitzvah retrospective that might draw you into the experience of thinking about how much you have grown over your lifetime. So I was the one with all the glory While you were the one with all the strength To me, being a cantor is a way to use what I have been trained to do from a musical background. I spent many years playing piano and singing in choirs and performing uh, in musical theater and opera. Um, what I've been trained to do with what I love to do with who I really am, uh, both as an artist and as a person, as a Jew, I found it's a tremendous way to be a part of a community and to contribute what I have to offer in a way that's meaningful to others and hopefully help the community grow and, and be enriched as a result. To me, uh, the best way I can describe community is to go to the, to the Hebrew source for it. In, in Hebrew, the word for community is kehila, kahal, both, uh, both words describing a gathering together, a coming together. And I think it's no coincidence that the same root is found in the word makhela, which in Hebrew means choir or chorale. So from a musical perspective and a community perspective, the idea of a coming together, of many voices coming as one, co-mingling, community finding finding that uh, that singular that singular uh, that singular thing that makes them one uh, many voices creating one voice a louder more beautiful voice than 
could ever be done individually. That, uh, that's the most important thing that community can bring here. According to our ancient rabbis, anyone who reads the Torah without a melody or studies without a song reduces the value of the text. Our sages taught that one who studies Torah through song demonstrates that they are happy with their learning. Cantor Josh Breitzer. You have taught us. And we have rejoiced in learning from you. Like the biblical Joshua, you have instructed us to raise our sounds. Now Cantor Josh. Write down this song for yourself. And teach it to the children of Israel. Place the song upon their lips. That it may be a witness for God, for the children of Israel. And for our community. Who needs an Oscars retrospective when you have one quite like that? Josh, we love you so much, and it is such an honor to be celebrating 10 years of your time at CBE. Earlier today, I saw you and I gave you a gift bag filled with a number of goodies, and those are just a sample of some of what we will hopefully be giving to you soon. And I hope that this evening is an opportunity for you to consider how much you've meant to this community, but also how much you've grown as a human being and how much you have matured since the adolescent whom only I, as far as I can tell, got to know so long ago. I love you. Josh, on behalf of our clergy team, our staff, our board, our congregation, our community, we thank you for all of the ways that you have said Hineni, all the ways that you've shown up with your many splendored gifts to us, to this community over these 10 years. We thank you for your service. We thank you for your thoughtfulness. We thank you for your sense of humor. We thank you for your caring. We thank you for your love. We pray that you will continue to grow and thrive in our midst and that we will continue to pray together and sing together and learn together and share joys and sorrows together and change the world together for many, many years to come. It is now my great pleasure to welcome back to CBE, Cantor Shana Zell. Erev Tov. It warms my heart to be with all of you in celebration of Josh's 10th anniversary at CBE. I am Cantor Shana Zell, Josh's first cantorial intern. On behalf of past and present CBE cantorial interns, Sarah Grabiner, Shani Cohen, and Jordan Goldstein, I would like to introduce In This Place, an original composition I wrote as I was transitioning from cantorial intern of CBE to cantor of TBE, Temple Beth Elohim in Wellesley, Massachusetts. In thinking of Josh, I am reminded of a quote by Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. What we need more than anything else is not textbooks, but text people. It is the personality of the teacher, which is the text that the pupils read, the text that they will never forget. Josh is the ultimate mentor. He is kind and patient, providing a safe space for his students to experiment, a place for us to develop into authentic leaders. Josh is understanding and encouraging, enabling our innate gifts to shine and championing our uniqueness. As interns, we witnessed his depth of intentionality in prayer and song. Josh taught us to understand every word we daubened and sang, to breathe life and context through emotion into the text. 
He provided invaluable real life clergy opportunities for us to wet our feet and connected our HUC curriculum to the work expected of us as interns and as future cantors. Josh is the ultimate repertoire king, introducing us to pieces of music ranging from Yiddish to Israeli rock, always selecting the perfect piece for the perfect moment and the right voice. He graciously shares his bima with anyone who exemplifies his passion for music and prayer, showing genuine joy in the success of his students. In this place, which is loosely based on the story of Jacob, was inspired by Josh and this sacred community. Every minute at CBE, I knew, ma nora ha makom hazeh, how awesome is this place. Josh, thank you for making us all feel solid on this ground and safe within this space. We look around and because of you, we feel God in this place. Hinenu. Mazel tov, my friend, on 10 amazing years. On a journey from one home to another, I stop along the way and see a vision of sanctuary. When I lay my head to rest, a sweet escape from all the rest, did I see an angel? We now are going to make a transition from all of our offerings to our cantor, all of the gifts of love and music and talent and beauty that we've offered up this evening to Josh's response to us and his gifts in return. Mm -hmm. 
Each line is a story. Each shade is a story. All life is a story. Once upon a storm. Thank you to my colleague and teacher, cantor Jonathan Commissar, for composing and playing that gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Thank you to my wife and beloved soulmate, Donna, who has done such wonders this year to keep me steady, our kids engaged, and our household sane. And thank you to our dear friend and exquisite lyric baritone, Jesse Blumberg, whom Donna and I have known since we were all in college together at the University of Michigan, go blue. I think we first met one another when we were aged somewhere between then comes 18 and 20 to pursue. Jonathan, Donna, Jesse, I'm so glad to have made music with you for this special occasion. Thank you to all of the participants in today's concert our fantastic former and current cantorial interns. I'm so moved to see and hear you all singing Cantor Shauna Zell's song together. Thank you, Shauna, for being here. 
Our amazing guest artists who have graced us with visits from near and far over the last decade, our sweet CBE members of all ages and so much talent. A very special thank you to our fabulous host committee, so ably chaired by Esther Bigler and Molly Silverberg, and to all of the generous donors whose contributions made this virtual event a reality and whose names will be displayed when we conclude. Thanks to our courageous and committed Board of Trustees led by President John Horowitz. John, thank you for your words. And to all our Life Trustees, David Kasakov, Jules and Julianne Hirsch, thank you for sharing. To Jason Zivik for recording, mixing, mastering, and producing all these videos, including this very stream right now. And thanks to each of you who are here with us right now, either live or on demand. I know I'm competing for your attention with literally the entire internet, and I'm sincerely grateful to have it for just a few more minutes. I feel so fortunate to work with some phenomenal individuals at CBE. Our terrific engagement team, Karen Gerwin, Mary Beth Bacha, Nate Jaffe, and Julianne McManus. Our champion program directors, Tehila Eisenstadt and Jackie Israel, and all their devoted, heroic teachers our indefatigable finance office, facilities crew, and security personnel, the absolutely incomparable Debbie Bruckman, an all-star squad of clergy, Rabbis Rebecca Epstein, Stephanie Colin, Matt Green, student Rabbi Liza Scheffler, Erev Cantor Shani Cohen, student Cantor Jordan Goldstein, and our captain, Rabbi Rachel Timoner, a paragon of how to be completely present and completely genuine in everything one says and does. And most significantly, our executive director, Alan Herman, whose tireless efforts and extraordinary accomplishments on our behalf in ways large and small, a mere 21 months on the job, are already far, far too many to number. In fact, would everyone right now please take this opportunity to write thank you, Alan, in the chat or in the comments, whether you know him or not, just write thank you, Alan. It simply can't be said enough times. Thank you, Alan. 10 years, CBE. Let's think about that number for a moment. Since my first day of work to today, that's 3,555 days. And CBE, oh, how much we've been through over all those days. As of yesterday, 421 students became B'nai Mitzvah. It's so sweet to see so many of you. 530 souls have gone to their eternal rest. And 883 new babies were born. And that includes you, Jonah and Giddy. We've seen ceilings collapse and be rebuilt. Century old sanctuary walls renovated stained glass windows restored, pane by pane, painstakingly. That's one. <laughs> a new Sefer Torah commissions, the first in New York City to be written by a woman, marking our congregation's 150th anniversary. We hosted the inauguration of a new URJ president. We weathered Hurricane Sandy. We answered the buzzer when the pizza <laughs> arrived, mobilized, to help thousands in need. We had a complete turnover in rabbinic leadership at all levels, at all levels and senior staff transitions in virtually every department. We helped organize our borough, city, and state to stand up for essential human dignity. And just this last year, we met a life-altering global pandemic. We learned to connect meaningfully from a social distance we realized a hundred year old dream by coming together with Union Temple. When I started at CBE, there were officially 640 member units. There are now more than 1,000, at least according to all those who have filled out our senses. 10 years ago in the secular calendar, almost to the day I was installed as your cantor. I dedicated that occasion to the memory of one of my great grandfathers, Cantor Jacob Margolis, whose portrait hangs in my study. As I sit here with my next generation, 
I'm thinking of one of their great-grandfathers, my papa, Irv Witkoff, who passed away exactly 10 years ago in the Hebrew calendar. His yard site starts this evening. This is a picture of us from a few years ago. A World War II veteran who fought in the Battle of the Bulge, Irv Witkoff became a steel salesman by day and a Simcha band leader by night, playing multiple instruments and bringing joy to hundreds of Jewish families in the Detroit metro area. Some of my fondest childhood memories involved sleeping over at Papa's house, eating frosted flakes in the morning, watching him make his famous coleslaw, being fascinated by his fashionable hairpiece, sound of his loafers clacking on the hardwood floor, the enticing smell of his cigarettes lingering in the air. Papa bought me my first toy piano. He taught me how to play war and how to play pool. He also taught me how important it is even at our lowest moments, especially at our lowest moments, to still treat everyone with kindness and respect, to accentuate the positive, to seek out and cultivate sources of joy in our everyday lives, and to always say to the ones who are counting on us, Hineni, here I am. CBE, it is such an awesome privilege to get to say Hineni and to be your cantor, to be someone you can count on, to help you seek out and cultivate sources of joy and holiness in your everyday lives. You have all brought such joy and holiness to my family's life. Donna and I could not dream of a better community in which to raise Jonah and Gideon. I count myself as the most fortunate cantor in the country. No other synagogue even comes close to who we are and what we do. I am so grateful to have served you these past 10 years, and I pray to be able to serve you for many, many more years to come. As some of you may know, one of the Hebrew words for cantor is chazan, which comes from chazon, meaning vision. The Bible uses chazon most notably in the context of what prophets envision for the people Israel in days to come. In Jewish communal life, a chazan uses music, ritual, and prayer to help their people envision a shared future through a unique spiritual art form known as chazanut. So, as your chazan, let me share with you a chazon for our shared future by way of some contemporary chazanut. In a couple moments, we'll be screening a virtual ensemble performance of Psalm 126, set to a melody by our friend and former Brooklyn neighbor, Joey Weisenberg. You will surely recognize many voices and many faces. You might also recognize the words from Birkat Hamazon, our grace after meals on Shabbat and festivals, Shir Hamalot Beshuv Adonai, a song of ascents. When God restores the fortunes of Zion, we see it as in a dream. Our mouths shall be filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Listen for the word Rina, joy, which is fittingly resonant in Joey's setting. And you just might be able to see it as in a dream ascending those steps, re-entering our sacred spaces, our trusty compasses, guiding our way. And at a certain point, our mouths really can't help but laugh. Many of us have been counting the days for so long since the pandemic began. It has been so long since we've been together in person at CBE. I have so missed singing with you in the same physical room, actually hearing your voices in harmony with mine at the same time. But I can see that it won't be long now. There are now more days behind us than there are in front of us. We can find the strength, the persistence, the patience to count just a little bit longer. If you haven't begun counting yet, if you haven't learned how to number your days, you can begin with me right here, right now, today. And in Jewish time, as the sun is about to set, today is almost tomorrow. 
We actually call tomorrow the 14th of Iyar in the Hebrew calendar, Pesach Sheni, another Passover, just in case you missed the first. It's a perfect opportunity for second chances. And so I invite us to elevate ourselves as best as we can in body or in spirit, to bless and count the Omer these weeks between Passover and Shavuot, between redemption and revelation. Deborah and Dave shared this beautiful melody with us earlier. And then we'll conclude with Psalm 126, Shir Hama'alot Beshuv Adonai, united in joyful song, dreaming of that day very soon to come, when God willing, we can each say, in the same place, at the same time, in the presence of our holy wholeness, Hineni, here I am. Ready? Yeah. Shasvirata Omer, Shasvirata Omer, Shasvirata Omer, Sheva Shabbatot, Temimot Tiena, Sheva Shabbatot, Temimot Tiena. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kirshanu, Bemitzvotav Vetzivanu, Al Sfirat HaOmer, Al Sfirat HaOmer, Al Sfirat HaOmer, Al Sfirat HaOmer, Tisha vesrim yom Shem arba shavuot Ve yom echad la ome Ay, 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 ay Ay, 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 ay Ay, 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 ay Ay, 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 ay
May our mouths be filled with laughter and our tongues with songs of joy. We love you, Josh Breitzer. Good night, everyone.